Hello there, welcome to another episode of the Valkyria Chronicles of Ungainy Titan. And I've speeded up playthrough, uh, the video speed. So I'm playing it at a slightly faster uh, speed than I recorded it at, because I feel that it just drags out a little bit too much otherwise. Um, so we start off with the briefing about the forthcoming operation to retake the enemy um, bridge at Vassal, or the Vassal's a, a galleon town. Did the enemy hold the bridge? And it looks like a suicide mission for the militia, but meanwhile, the meeting is interrupted by Alicia because there is trouble back in Squad 7. Uh, Rosie's refusing. She's deeply prejudiced against dark sins. And Asara is a dark sin, and Largo is backing her up. Um, I think Largo, as it subsequently evolves over the course of the thing, is less prejudiced against dark sins, but he's much more prejudiced against new lieutenants. Wilkin heads off the problem by promising victory, and they'll obey thereafter. You hear something? Yeah, I do. What is it? It's me. He has his arrow water seal the Edelweiss, recognises that um, part of the river is shallower than the rest because of plants growing on the banks and is able, is able to drive the tank across that location and furthermore he has the squad follow him in boats or these elements of the squad follow him in boats using the cover of the morning fog uh, to get across the river. So he's mounting an assault on the bridge from inside the, um, the enemy perimeter without them realizing it. So this starts your actual battle where you have to fight it out. Now I kept losing this battle because I kept losing the Edelweiss because I was overusing the Edelweiss as my principal anti-tank uh, round. And I also discovered that one of the big important things is um, taking an enemy bases as quickly and as efficiently as you can. Taking an enemy base uh, stops the enemy from sending reinforcements to that base. But it also allows you to send reinforcements to your base. Now, you have a, a roster of your total starting number of units, and you can't change that. But you can withdraw units via a base that you've captured, or your own base, and then replace them with units, different units, if you want. You can also units to get wounded, get withdrawn automatically if you can get a unit up to them to bring on a medic. And that creates a hole in your roster, and that hole can then be filled by subsequent spending of a command point to bring on a reinforcement and a base. And the advantage, and sometimes you get a unit left behind because you have um, you've spent your command points to move more advanced units. So there's a unit at a base that might take three or four action points to get them up to the front, and it might be more efficient to withdraw that unit, activate it, withdraw the unit. And then in a subsequent turn, bring that unit on in a forward base. And that'll cost you two action points rather than maybe three or four action points to send units forward. So in this playthrough, I managed to capture the base quite quickly. Uh, I did it in the first turn. And actually that turned out to have a plot-specific advantage in the battle because uh, one of the things in the battle is that the base or radius for reinforcements um, enemy reinforcements don't actually arrive until they sort of realize the scale of the attack and you have a turn or two before uh, the enemy starts sending for reinforcements and then the reinforcements start arriving the following turns in fairly large numbers including quite a lot of lancers which is why i kept losing the um the edelweiss However, if you take this base and the next base very quickly, and it is doable in the first two turns, um, they're not very well guarded at the beginning, you take the two bases pretty quickly, you um, preempt that and you give yourself another turn's grace before reinforcements start arriving, which is very valuable on your side because um, the utility of the base really depends on either your willingness to withdraw units or depending on the amount of casualties you took on the way up. Now, I may have said earlier, but I didn't really realise the how to use snipers properly. And I didn't realise they had a zoom function in their gun sights, which would have made them a lot more effective than I realised or was able to utilise in the game. So I, I should have made more use of snipers, because there are enemy units, and there are snipers that would have been um, more easily dealt with by a sniper 
then I had then I had to use I had to use uh, basically scouts and extra movement to get rid of them. Snipers are extremely potent as well because uh, they do have the ability to get rid of enemy units in one shot, and in the right location that can be very very effective. However, I made up the loss really with using scouts. And, uh, well, scouts and shock troopers, but also uh, lancers are very effective against the tanks, particularly if you damage the tank already. So, if a tank is down or hit once by the Edelweiss, you can often finish it off with a lancer, and especially if you can get behind shots of the radiator. Shots of the radiator make. They won't necessarily take a tank out in one go, although I've had the Edelweiss taken out in one go by an enemy shot into the radiator from an enemy lancer. And it may be the case that if they, they level up and the technology sort of improves, because your research, the weaponry improves constantly over the course of the game, and they add effects as well, so that they not only uh, take off, they debuff, they reduce your bonuses to defense, bonuses to accuracy, various other things like that. So keeping up with the technology is quite important, which is why I also reckon playing out these the skirmish battles is quite important. Problem like you, the risk is that you permanently lose uh, units. Um, it can happen, particularly if you lose a unit at the end of the phase. The enemy move next, and they walk up to the unit, and the unit dies. Uh, nothing you can do about that. You can also find you, you can trap units into locations where you can't get somebody up there to heal them in the three turns. Uh, they, you need to do it, at least not without risking the battle. So sometimes you have to make the judgment call, or uh, sometimes you just strand them. There is um, one battle later on, and if you make uh, if a unit dies in certain locations, they're irretrievable. Maneuver wise, what I found the best strategy to do was to come up to this wall with a couple of units, take out the Ragnite uh, containers in the vicinity, do as much damage as you can, then move back from the location they're clustered on the wall to allow the Edelweiss through, but don't bring the Edelweiss up until you've kind of secured the western side of the map. Um, so you've secured the western side of the map. You don't have to secure all the map, but you've secured the second base and you've taken out the sniper across the street. Uh, that tank, for instance, is running, so it's important to take it out before it actually gets mobile and into the fray. Usually they start up. If tanks are left around, they'll all start eventually, but they take time to start up, so I don't know if there's a percentage chance that a tank will start in any given turn or something like that. Taking the southern and western bases really ups your chances in the game and do them as quickly as possible. Ideally, you should have it done in the first two turns. But now, Rosie is wounded uh, at the moment, so the main reason I'm not using it to directly assault the uh, second base because um, that's the reason I brought the engineer up. Because the engineers have infinite heals. Um, They've only one targeting, so they can't, can't do it more than once a turn, but they can walk up to a unit and heal that unit. Now, I can't do it at this distance. Thought I might be able to, which would have saved me a command point to do it. Also, very effective to have engineers near your tank, because they can heal the tank. I just thought there was enough chance there I might hit the radiator of that tank. And now bring the engineer up to heal Rosie up so we get Rosie back to full health and as a shock trooper she can then be more effective at full health so engineers aren't much use in combat although sometimes if they're in the vicinity um, it's worth triggering a shot the other thing is that if you have units close together so you bring a unit up to um, a shock trooper or a particularly tough target then you can bring a second unit up as well, and both of them will fire. So the first unit is firing, the second unit will fire as well, and add their fire to the damage, so that having more than one unit uh, in close proximity to a target to a, a target can actually be an effective plan. You get a kind of a bonus, bonus fire effect from having the extra units there. Now, still probably not the most efficient uh, in use of action points in this particular um, battle, I mean it's still early. The other thing you can do that I discovered is very important, some, particularly in some um, some of the scenarios, uh, the only way to win 
is to actually accumulate command points. So if I didn't use all my command points, now I did it in every turn in this game, and I've brought up a, I'm bringing on a reinforcement here. But in this turn, in every turn, I actually use my full allotment of command points. But sometimes you might not use it, or you might choose not to use it, and it can be really worthwhile accumulating some extra command points to accomplish something later on where you need to spend a lot of command points. For instance, one use might be um, you might know that in the next turn you're getting a sniper into position say in an advanced location where they can see a lot of enemies so you might accumulate command points so that you could um, utilize that sniper the three times and still move all the rest of your units or you might use the sniper three times bring an engineer up resupply the sniper with ammunition and then use the sniper three times again so that would be seven command points spent on sniping but it might mean seven enemies dead uh, or at least six enemies dead rather which might be an effective use of command points so i'm actually quite fortunate here that this um this base is guarded by a lancer uh, the Lancers don't shoot back. Lancers and Snipers don't shoot back, so their defensive capability is quite limited. Whereas Scouts and uh, Shock Troopers will shoot back at a, an enemy arriving into their uh, activation range, or uh, kind of aggro range, I suppose. A base camp also cannot be occupied while there's an enemy unit occupying the base area. So you generally have to eliminate all enemy units uh, from the base area, or just blow them out of the vicinity. So Tossing a hand grenade into a couple of enemy units in a base area can actually, or the mortar round from the tank, can cause the enemy units to finish up outside the base area. So you could just drop the mortar round in, and even though the enemy units aren't dead, they're no longer within the perimeter of the base, and you could just slip another unit in, then a scout or something like that, and spot over the base, though its defenders are still alive. Now we see the first benefit of taking the two bases so quickly. Uh, it means there's nobody there to respond to the communication. So uh, Isara fakes a response and fools them. So it gives us a turn of grace before the enemy start uh, seeking reinforcements. That couple of turns grace and the reinforcements is actually quite useful. Um, because as far as I remember, quite a lot of Lancers appear. Which of course is one of the things that makes it very difficult for... Um, poor old Edelweiss when you need to bring it into action and you really do need to bring it into action to kind of clear the way for the um, final assault in the camp which they're directly ahead of where the Edelweiss is that position there on the north uh, western side of the map so enemies turn to move and mostly you don't see the enemy movement sometimes you'll have a thing like Cherry will like, you know, is appearing there, but you can't see anything going on. It just means there's something happening near where Cherry is deployed. So you can uh, you can tell that there's probably stuff going on or activity going on in a particular area. But even though you might have a character close enough to potentially see it, they might not necessarily see what's happening. So one of the um, the activities that obviously happened was that uh, enemies tried to move back towards the base. Which is probably what Cherry was picking up, but wasn't um, in the line of sight position to see it. So we're going to activate Rose to get rid of the Lancer in the street. Because if I bring the Edelweiss out into the street, he will be a threat. And uh, we haven't managed to take him out. So we're probably going to have another crack at him. Yes, we'll just go again. Lancers are definitely a priority target. That's an enemy tank as far as I know in the plaza to the west of Rosie, but we, I generally ignored it for now because it's just too far away to engage in it. Um, and I had other higher priority targets, so it's Edie, not Cherry. Um, Edie doesn't have a useful target, really. But I don't want to advance her any far, further forward because there are active tanks across the way from her and she'd be under the machine gun fire multiple tanks and she just um, dies, that's why I brought her back around the corner now the people uh, clustered around the wall, I'm going to have to move them out of the way as well because that's the path that the Edelweiss is going to go through and I risk injuring my own people if I leave them there so uh, we have a Ragnite crate here, we can blow it up and blow up the inactive tank beside it 
And then we move Alex back out of the way so he's no longer blocking the wall, access to the wall. Um, I thought I could set him up so he could see another one of the locations, but can't quite get him into the position I want him. Uh, I wanted him to be able to sort of see and still be in cover, but I can um, I can do it with a leash. Here. And again, I blow up an inactive tank, but I also damage the active tank beside it. Now I have other tasks that I want to do for Alicia uh, shortly, and um, I wanted to bring her around the flank, but I actually finished up, I think, using her against the sniper. And now we're going to bring the Edelweiss up into action, and the Edelweiss can just push through the wall here, so as I create um, an opening, and that will also allow me to bring troops through that wall. Now I've managed to hit the light tank and destroy its tracks. But I probably should, um, but I'll miss the next shot. I think I'm at sort of extreme range. And now um, the Imperials realize that the problem, there's a problem with the other side of the bridge and they can hear the gunfire and that the last message from Alpha Camp was a uh, fake. So off we go into the Imperial round um, and they start moving troops and requesting reinforcements. And there's a sniper. It work. Gonna have to get rid of him. Something happening in the west, and it's back down to um, the galleon phase. Now I make a mistake here, shooting that tank from the starting location rather than moving forward and then shooting the tank. I suppose I had lost the Edelweiss so many times that I was just being hyper cautious. I think I'd kind of forgotten at this point in time that um, engineers could repair the Edelweiss. Because I don't remember repairing the Edelweiss during the course of this battle and that was rather foolish to me in many respects. So it is worth remembering that engineers, as well as healing allies and resupplying them with ammunition, engineers can also heal, um, they can also heal tanks. They can use their engineering tool. You get them up beside the tank. You can use the engineering tool if you have um, what you call it a fire phase ready. You can um, use the engineering tool and repair the tank in question. So I'm now actually in a pretty good position. I brought most of my forces to bear. I have one shock trooper a bit stranded, uh, cut off from the battle, and yeah, judicious use of the. Um, Edelweiss is always necessary because it just takes up so much resources in terms of command points and it doesn't actually move all that far. Sometimes to get anywhere on the Edelweiss you need to have actually accumulated command points to push it beyond its uh, limit. It doesn't deteriorate to nothing as fast as a, a, tro a regular trooper but it doesn't actually have that lot of command point or action points to move in the first place. We have another light tank removed and we have also removed another uh, command point from the Imperial side, although I don't know how effective removing, how much difference removing command points make. The enemy always seems to have more command points than it knows what to do with. So Alex is up next. Uh, I want to get a... F Where do I want to put him? Well, he's out of movement, so he's going to end there anyway. So yeah, shock troopers, very powerful in the assault, very powerful on the defence. They're your best units in many cases, they're quite versatile, but their biggest problem is their mobility. They, their mobility is low, they're not, they're the second, well they're the third lowest after the Scouts are the best, I think engineers are second, and I'm not sure if there's much difference between scouts and engineers, and uh, then you have shock troopers. Lancers are slightly behind. Now we we'll wait to see what the Imperials are going to do. I have my uh, forces pretty well positioned. There's a small bit. A few more tasks to do. The Edelweiss has taken some damage there. And you can say, yeah, one of the things that I didn't realise or forgot about in this battle was that the engineers could repair the Edelweiss. Otherwise I would not have um, suffered as badly or I would have probably won the game a lot more quickly, a lot more handily. Now, Rosie can't actually exit out the side she's at. I just took a few pot shots at the sniper at long range. 
She doesn't have much chance of hitting. She has a little bit of damage, but nothing that really noticeable in the grand scheme of things. My next objective now really is to get rid of that sniper and to put units into a position where I can um, get around the flanks. Well, it's not very much the flanks, I suppose. We're already on the flank at the, ba the final base camp. I didn't notice the ladder when I came in here first. And I actually ran past it. And only spotted it in my turnaround. Didn't have the movement left to get up. Um, that's another thing you need to... I need to... I learned the hard way to pay a lot more attention when I'm moving. Maybe moving smaller uh, jumps. The uh, Imperials like tossing landmines around the place. Uh, the base of that ladder now would have been an ideal spot. In a prepared defence where they would have tossed a landmine. And it's very easy walking into them. I thought about leaving Alicia up here as a sniper, but she's actually quite a long distance from anyone. And her ability to hit is not is pretty good, but it's not good enough to be sniping at that kind of distance. On the other hand, if I got a sniper into that building, I could probably hit uh, and accumulate enough uh, command points. I could have wiped out a good chunk of that front line in, one, uh, in a couple of action, uh, a couple of command points. Again, I'm using Rosie's fire effect more as a in hope than expectation. I didn't really expect anything out of that. Uh, you don't get return fire from shock troopers if you're beyond a certain range. They activate at a certain range. That beyond that, they don't seem to return fire. But frequently at the ranges where they don't return fire, your chances of killing them or even damaging them significantly is very diminished. And it goes down very rapidly with range. So we've pushed Rosie forward with a couple of action points um, and we've just used her to soften up a few enemy units and I'm not entirely... Yeah, I'll leave her where she is at the moment. She's at sufficiently long range and she's tough enough to survive most most actions. Now I'm going to push this guy forward because I want to get rid of him. Um, the tank could drive over him. But the chances are that it wouldn't kill him and he'd just pop up to one side or the other side where he'd be even more annoying than he was there in front of it. I'm using the last action point again to well, bring Stelinus close enough to be um, somewhat useful. Possible to be able to bring him into the fray from this location rather than having him uh, completely isolated out down the street. So the enemy are bringing on their reinforcements. Um... The Edelweiss has come under fire again from tanks. There's another tank after moving out. It tries to fire, shoot Rosie with his main cannon. You can actually shoot at infantry, even though it's an anti armor round. The chances of hitting them are slim to very little, but if you do hit them, you can practically wipe them out. They can survive a direct shot from an anti tank round that actually hits, but usually they don't. And. Uh, But the chances, it's kind of a desperation move. It's like shooting people with lancers. Uh, the chances of them surviving, the chances of being hit isn't great. So if they get hit, they probably won't survive the hit. But if, they're, if they aren't hit, uh, and they're very likely not to be hit. So it's a bit of a desperation move, because if you have better moves, you wouldn't make it. You'd make something to be more sure of doing damage or causing the kill. Now we've, we've managed to take out a lancer. Which is very useful because he was quite a big threat to the Edelweiss and we've gotten Rosie into a very forward position here. So we're going to activate Rosie again because I don't particularly, oh no, we're going to activate Alicia instead. Um, but I wouldn't want to move Rosie anyway if I activated her, I'd probably leave her in her current location and just um, use her to take out the shock troopers in the street. The same as I've used Alicia here. I just want Alicia to be in a forward position, really, so that she's in a position to run into the base if I manage to clear the defenders out to change the flag, because it's the easiest way of doing it is to get a good movement unit in. So you can guarantee reaching the flag in the movement phase without being shot at. Low health shock trooper here in front of Salinas. Um, we activate him again. Get rid of him. And that clears the street, more or less. Um, this guy. You're going to run over here and clear clear your man out of the sandbags, or at least clear the sandbags out of your man. Um, the grenade won't necessarily kill him, 
but it will remove the sandbags so that any subsequent attempt to kill him, he won't have the defensive benefit of the sandbags. The last command point, the last command point will be spent, well we can't use it on the Edelweiss, so we'll be spent getting Yoko into a position where we can shoot that last tank that's there in front of the uh, enemy base. We didn't take out the tank, tank but we killed its thread so it can't move, so that is also an advantage. Because if it can't move it means it can't try and get in around behind the Edelweiss. The enemy phase and the enemy haven't got a lot of uh, command points left. Uh, we've been taking out tanks quite steadily and that's generally been costing them command points. The um, tank down the street I think finally lurched out into the street. This guy didn't move. Um, some of the reinforcements are trying to push forward and push back some of our people but you know Rosie's has the advantage of cover there and she's pretty well embedded and they're back to us again. Right, so who to move? We'll move Yoko. Uh, we want to get her across the street, see if we can get her position to shoot the back of that tank. Not really effective, but we can move her again and do it again. This is a more... Um, well, she's out of movement, so we have to stop it here. But I want her to get behind the tank. Now, it's a more risky position. There's a couple of defenders that are going to shoot at her. But Lancers are pretty tough, and if she gets the shot off, she'll destroy the tank, and that will clear the way for the Edelweiss. I think I can do it in this turn anyway. We managed, she manages to have enough movement left that I can get back into proper cover, so that's okay. I'll still have use of her later on. Now it's time to push forward. With the Edelweiss, there are no... Um, Lancer units around. There's one enemy tank remaining, and he's at the other end of the town. We'll drop a mortar in here, which has the effect of blowing the way the um, cover for in front of both troopers and getting rid of uh, blowing a man out of the base. So Alicia will advance. She has. Well, she doesn't quite take him out that time. I didn't quite properly set up a headshot. But we'll activate her again, because all they need to do is get rid of this guy, the scout, who isn't the toughest of troopers. There's now no one defending the enemy base. We go in, we change the base, and we've won the battle. With the battle, we have control of the Vassal Bridge uh, control units. It's a, um, what they call it? a drawbridge, and they can lift the bridge with the enemy units on it, and... Um, dump basically the enemy forces into the sea so we get our uh, our experience and our credits and whatever bonuses that we get switch on the ragnite stuff and away she goes and up goes the drawbridge and the imperial forces fall into the river although i do wonder what happened to the people who fell back to the bridge houses i suppose they weren't in great shape and they probably surrendered or something like that the tanks looked that they were toppling over anyway. So that is um, Operation Cloudburst complete. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a like. If not, um, well, don't give it a like. If you have not already subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. I will catch you all again soon. Bye for now.